Welcome back everyone and we are up to chapter 16 of David Walliams' The Midnight Gang. Chapter 16, Polar Bear. It wasn't a real polar bear, it was a man in a polar bear suit. Not the best polar bear suit either. This one was made of cotton wool that looked as if it had been scavenged from the hospital. There were two holes for the eyes, the ears were made of sponges, and the nose was made from the end of a stethoscope. The claws were curtain hooks, and the fangs were nothing more than folded pieces of white cardboard from a medicine box. On seeing the polar bear up close, Tom didn't feel so scared anymore. He knew it was a person in a suit. Then the person pulled off the hood off. It was the porter. On seeing the man's misshapen face, the boy screamed again. Ah! Hello, children, said the porter cheerfully. I'm so sorry I'm late. Tom was breathing in and out far too fast now. What? he panted. Slow down, young sir, said the man. It's only me, the porter. So it's you behind this? Yes, it took me weeks to sculpt that arctic wasteland from the ice in the freezer room. Thankfully it hadn't been defrosted for years so there was plenty of snow to play with. Tom was bemused. He'd been told that the Midnight Gang was for kids only and a secret and a secret from grown-ups. Why on earth was this scary looking man involved? Hello Porter, said Amber as George and Robin struggled to wheel her to the entrance of the freezer room. Good evening, young Miss Amber, replied the man. I was planning to pop out from behind the igloo dressed as a polar bear and surprise you, but I just couldn't sew up the ears on time. The man offered up the hood. One of the black sponge ears was dangling by a thread. It's brilliant, exclaimed Amber. It's your best one ever. I'd hug you if I could. The porter gently patted her with his cotton wool glove. That is sweet. Thank you, young lady. The wish to go to the North Pole took rather a lot of thinking on my part. I never thought, when I I was admitted to hospital to have my tonsils out, that I would end up meeting a polar bear, remarked George. Not a real one, George, said Robin. Yes, I realise that, said George, soon after he took his hood off. Oh dear, purred Robin. But Porter, why are you doing all this, demanded Tom. Me? Oh well, I suppose I always like to help out the Midnight Gang, right from the start, replied the man with a glint in his eye. i just got to be careful Matron doesn't find out, or I'd get fired on the spot. So why do it? Well, I think I feel it's worth the risk. I believe that if the patients in this hospital are happy, are happy then there is mu- a much better chance of them getting better. That makes sense, thought Tom, before asking, but what if they don't? Even if patients don't get better, they might feel better, and that's worth something. Certainly is, agreed Robin. I'm just a lowly porter, the lowest of the low, slurred the man. You're not the lowest of the low, interrupted Amber. That's kind, he replied. There's always the bog cleaner, added George, not entirely helpful. Well, I'm sure that makes him feel a whole lot better, said Robin. Bog cleaning is important if smelly work, young sir. I never had the chance to go to university and study to be a doctor. That's what I would really have loved to do with my life. I spent a lot of my young life in a hospital, not unlike this one. Trying to straighten this, move that, he said, indicating his misshapen face. None of it worked. I missed out on proper education. I would have loved to have gone to school, but I was told it was better I stay at the hospital where I wouldn't frighten the other children. Suddenly, Tom felt a hot surge of guilt. The boy screamed when he'd seen the porter, not once, but twice. I've been in hospital now for two months with these blasted broken arms and legs of mine, said Amber, and so many children have come and gone from the ward in that time. So many dreams have come true, and none of us could have done it without you. The porter looks a little bashful. Why, thank you, Miss Amber, I have to admit... There have been some absolute beauties, haven't there? Tell me, tell me, tell me, demanded Tom. And we might find out about those tomorrow in chapter 17. Bye-bye.